In the history of vehicle manufacturing, the process hasn't changed much, only gotten more complicated. Bigger factories are usually better for economies of scale, which is partly why small startups are having a difficult time breaking into the market. But a startup company or rival is here to challenge that with micro factories. So instead of giant gigafactories and billion dollar stamping machines, there's the complete opposite. A rival has not only created a new product, but reinvented the process that makes it. Micro factories could be the next disruptive driving force in the transition to electric vehicles. So let's have a closer look at what they're all about. Hello and welcome to EV Source. My name is Harry and I'm your host for today's dose of EVs and technology. Ever since vehicle manufacturing started, the factories have all been gigantic from the beginning. You only have to look at a few big names in the industry like GM, VW, and now Tesla to realize that this is still true today. While Tesla has taken a slightly different approach with first principle thinking, vertical integrating and designing everything from the ground up, it still requires the giant factories. These factories tend to cost well over a billion dollars. To get a return on the investment, the factories are pumping out a large number of vehicles day after day. This is one of the reasons why some small startups have a difficult time breaking into the industry. But what if there was another way? One that did not require a giant factory or a billion dollar investment. A startup company known as Arrival is challenging these norms and is taking things to a whole new level. Arrival was founded in 2015 in the UK and has only recently come under the public spotlight and being more vocal about its approach to manufacturing manufacturing electric vehicles. The company is investing just $46 million to set up its first US production facility in Rock Hill, South Carolina, and will employ 240 workers when it opens later this year. They first unveiled an electric bus and then a van that can be customized for almost any purpose. Their technology allows them to design the vehicle with everyone who interacts with the vehicle in mind, from drivers to fleet operators and even cleaners. And because online shopping has seen a substantial increase after the pandemic, delivery vehicles are in much higher demand, and Arrival's goal is to provide worldwide transport that is sustainable and environmentally friendly. The company did a trial with Royal Mail in the UK in 2017 with 9 vehicles in London. In 2019, UPS trialed 35 vehicles and liked them so much that they made an order for 10,000 delivery vans to be used across the UK. Europe and the US. This deal is reportedly worth $400 million with a stake in the company. Arrival has also received investments from Hyundai, Kia and BlackRock. I spoke with Arrival's chief of growth, Finley Clark, who gave some excellent points about the company. Clearly, a lot of what of these companies have been doing is validating a lot of the technology that we've been building over the last five years because we are taking a slightly different approach. It's vertically integrated. So we're looking at our vehicle components, um, from the, the materials we're using, how the how the vehicles are assembled, it's all assembled. It's all done in an integrated way, and as a result, you know we're not using a lot of the same tier one suppliers that everyone else is using. It's it's a rival technology, so that's actually a key part of it. The commercial vehicle market has tremendous potential for electric vehicles and is just beginning to gain traction. Others are also tapping into the same market. There's the Amazon electric delivery van built by Rivian which is expected to be on the road by next year, and other small startups that are trying to break into the commercial vehicle market. But none have taken the same approach as Arrival, which is what makes it so unique and exciting to see how this pans out over the coming years. You would think that bus would require a larger factory, but due to the company's approach, they can build buses and vans in a warehouse, converting it into a manufacturing facility in just six months. And with our micro factory concept, which allows us to produce locally and in, in, in low capex, um, facilities and we're profitable at small volumes, you can actually begin to see a world where actually you're going to have arrival micro factories next to all the major cities in the world producing vehicles that are the right vehicles for the, you know, the conditions and the customers. Um, of that city. Historically, we've had one factory that distributes all the vehicles across the country and another factory in a different part of the world to distribute to other regions. But micro factories could change this entirely. You could start seeing micro factories popping up in almost every major city to save in delivery time and easily adjust to supply and demand. Arrival plans to have 31 factories around the world by 2024, regenerating local communities, bringing new jobs and paying local taxes. Currently, they are located in two different cities in the UK. There's the R&D facility in Banbury 
in the actual microfactory itself in Vister. Arrival aims to manufacture on demand and deliver the vehicle within three months. Generally speaking, electric vehicles have so far been slightly more expensive than their combustion engine counterparts, but Arrival's manufacturing process and materials enable them to save in terms of costs, bringing the price to the same or similar range as a combustion engine counterpart. In terms of the cost to our business, um, it costs us substantially less because we, we don't have metal stamping, we don't have paint shops, we don't have a lot of the core costs that are built into huge manufacturing plants. So that actually allows us to share that costs with our consumers and that's how we're able to lower the price of our vehicles. The main part of their vehicles is a robust skate which houses the batteries and a battery management system. A composite shell is then dropped onto the skate making the vehicle entirely modular, meaning broken parts can be swapped easily or upgraded as technology improves. One of the key components of Arrival's vertical integration strategy is its composite material that is used throughout the vehicle. But a large part of what we're looking to do is make the factory self-sufficient. So you would have sub-assembly, you'd have your robotic cells. Um, clearly, um, we have our composites factory in there as well. So the composites, which is what our vehicles are made of, the top hats of them, we'd have that being done in the facility as well. So it, it is designed to be, um, uh, yes, a self, self standing facility that will be able to produce end-to-end -end. Um, and that's uh, you know a key part of the process. These parts don't require any paint and can be ordered in different colors. The material doesn't break easily and doesn't get dense. Even a scratch won't be that visible thanks to the entire part being the same color. Unlike with paint that can expose the base coat or even the metal which then would require the entire part to be repainted or replaced. This approach gives arrivals vehicles much lower maintenance costs which is very appealing to fleet owners. The composite material can be recycled and reused as filler or to make new parts over and over again, which will further enhance sustainability. Though Arrival is starting with a bus and a van, they do have their eyes on other types of vehicles as well. But don't get your hopes up just yet for a consumer vehicle. Commercial vehicles have not seen much change in terms of customer-specific needs and thus have been underserved for years. I mean, at this moment in time, we've announced four vehicle platforms, starting with the bus, city bus, uh, we've got the, the sort of delivery van and we've got the larger delivery van and we are working on a, a small car platform. The key to Arrival's approach along with composite materials is designing all parts to be made in a micro factory. A typical car factory can have over a thousand robotic arms whereas a micro factory would only require approximately 70 robots. While the vehicle output for a single micro factory is said to be 1000 buses per year, or 10,000 vans per year. The beautiful thing about micro factories is that they can be easily scaled up just by another warehouse and set up as many assembly stations as needed. So if we start with the, the design process, I think it, it's worth saying that everything at Arrival, the philosophy has been to design vehicles with the assembly of those vehicles very much in mind. So the core of how we've achieved this and this is why we, for six years we've been working on arrival components, is that we work off a, a grid architecture. So most, most vehicle you know, EVs have got a, a skateboard chassis. The difference with ours is that it's on a grid-based architecture and everything of our components needs to fit in this grid. So if you see our battery packs, you'll see they're sort of square modules. If you see our um, DC-DC module, you'll see it's in this square grid. And you'll notice that what that allows us to do is, number one, it allows for robots to be able to pick it up, put them into the chassis and glue all the bits and pieces together. But equally, what that gives us is the opportunity that to actually upgrade hardware as well as software over time. You know, a lot of the over-the-air updates with software is, is, is nothing new. The difference with our vehicle platforms is that, you know, let's say in six years time, the, the components, the technology has moved on, which it will do. The same the same component will fit in the slot in the, in the skateboard that the existing one does. So it actually allows that you can upgrade your vehicle all the time. And, and that gives, you know, when you think about it from a sustainability angle, if the, the, the top hat of the vehicle, i.e. the glass, the aluminium, the composite materials, if that is all fine and good, why would you just get rid of a vehicle after three or four years, for instance? Actually, if you can upgrade the vehicle, it creates whole new business models with regards to how you think about second life and all the rest of it, third life. 
But when it comes to autonomy, arrivals vehicles come as autonomy ready, meaning they have the necessary hardware on the vehicle side to allow autonomous software and hardware for some level of autonomy. Initially, the most likely scenarios are closed environment functions as explained by Finlay Clark. Where we see this to begin with is, let's say after a 12 hour shift, the vehicle comes back to the depot and it needs to go for a wash, needs to get to service, and it needs to get to the, the, the delivery, to the, the, the loading bay. Actually, in a sort of controlled environment like that, under five mile an hour, we think there's a real market for being able to have vehicles that could drive autonomously in, that, in those conditions. And that most likelihood will be the, the sort of early applications. It's one of the hardest sort of computing and AI problems out there. And there's loads of people working on it. And, uh, and clearly we think we'll have a role to play in the conversation. So what's next for Arrival apart from more micro factories around the globe? Well, one thing we can look forward to is possible vehicle partnerships with other automakers. Yeah, so our, our main partner from the automotive side is uh, the Hyundai Kia Motor Group who invested 100 million euros uh, roughly a year and a half ago now. Um, yeah, after doing a very significant due diligence on the components uh, over a long period of time, really validating what we were doing. And, and that partnership is aimed at looking at, um, you know, potential joint vehicle programs with, with Hyundai and Kia. And so it's, it's, there's nothing much we can tell you at the moment, but I, I think it's, it's worth saying that, um, yeah, that was a really big step in kind of validating a lot of the technology that we've been working on for, for many years at Arrival. So as we look forward to seeing Arrival manufacture and deliver the buses and UPS delivery vans, one thing is certain. The world is changing and it's changing fast. And I think things will only accelerate until we reach the peak of this transition to electric. And by the way, there's much more to this interview I had with Finlay Clark. A few questions that didn't quite make it to this episode. So check out the full interview on our Patreon page if you're interested. What do you think about micro factories? Do you think they could perhaps be the new norm for all future manufacturing facilities? As always, leave your thoughts down below in the comments. Once again, we are at the end of the video. And if you're still here, you are amazing. If you own a Tesla, get 10% off on your accessories when shopping at Abstract Ocean with the code EVSource. Also, don't forget to check out our merch store for shirts, hoodies, and more. And if you would like to show more support for the channel, consider becoming a patron and get access to exclusive content such as Q&As and behind the scenes. But in the end, the best form of support is having you watch and enjoy these videos. And of course, a shout out to our patrons you see on the screen and a special shout out to our power producer Inku Kang. Thanks for watching. My name is Harry and this is EV Source. Keep charging ahead and I'll catch you in the next one. Stay safe and take care.